Hi, we're here with Sumita Malik from the Shiv Nadar School in Delhi and uh, I wanted to uh, really ask this, this, this question about how do we make sure that when parents come into school and most of the time they come with really, really young children and filled with hope and, and the highest levels of expectations and they, and they come into a school and they join the early years program. What do you think schools need to do to get it right over there at the point of entry? Yeah, so um, parents certainly have a lot of expectations. So it's, it's important for school to be open in sharing what they're sharing uh, or what they're doing rather because it's a partnership for uh, a good 14 years with that uh, parent and the child. And um, we have to take the parent along keep sharing whatever the child is doing and what you are doing across uh, those years with the parent because you have to hold hands together with the parent for the child. You can't just say that I'm sitting across the table and you are uh, no one to intervene, in, intervene in, the, in the journey of the child. So it has to be a very uh, collaborative uh, experience for for uh, the parent as well as the child mm. when we are talking about uh, this this is complex right because the way i look at it is when children are really really small maybe parents are not sure how to test whether learning has happened right because a there is testing but there's also this idea of development happening when a child is small how do you handle that complex situation and in in all this how do you even think of improvement you yeah. know so it's very important uh, for um, any educator to, to assess the learning journey of each child and for that uh, you need to keep testing the child but it is not when you are giving a pen and paper. You need to look at the milestones of the child. Is my, my child meeting the milestone or not? And in that uh, you have to again collaborate with the parent to understand what were the milestones the child has met before coming to the school as well so that it becomes more personalized journey for the child and um, you have to keep reviewing the process of learning for each child for the educator not for the parent oh. and that is uh, if the entire journey of assessment is for the educator and assessment is just formative you know you don't have to make the child understand that you are assessing the child it's just the observations what you're doing and you're seeing that how the child is actually reacting or uh, maybe taking the learning journey ahead and um, certainly take the parent uh, in that journey along. This is so beautiful because especially in the early years, everything is so scientific. Like when I was going through some material from Maria Montessori, mm. she was talking about observation and, and really the science of behavior right there. You know, the, the, when she talks about exercising practical, like all these things, like the absorbent mind, for example. and and. Uh, for parents, as you beautifully said, it's a process of just joy and discovery and at some times uh, readjusting expectations. How do you handle that with parents? Because I think parents have most interest when their kids are, you know, the youngest and, and, and then it's inversely proportional. How do you handle that? Um, many times I say that schools can be for parents, not for children. Because uh, parents need to, to know that how we have to engage with my, my child as well as the school. Um, so you have to have a lot of sessions for the parents as a school. You need to be so transparent with the parent um, that um, not just the academics, the pedagogy, what you, you do, that has to be shared. But you have to have a platform for parenting as well because parenting is a... Uh, shifting goalpost across and it is very difficult in today's time and the more I hear you talk about early years the more I get the feeling that each school is actually not one school it's probably three or four different schools like there's the early years and there's the primary and maybe middle and secondary because children themselves are growing in different stages of development as well right and, and, and maturation uh, so uh, the question really here is <laughs> while do, do you think preschools not, you know, just generally, do you think generally preschools think let's get the kids into primary, then the primary will figure out what to do. Primary goes like let's get them into middle, middle will figure out what to do. And then, you know, let's get them into, you know, into 10 standard and then they'll figure out what to do. And after college, everyone goes like let the kids figure out what they want to do. <laughs> yeah. Who's taking responsibility? What would be the best way to do that? Uh, we have to understand each level. And uh, the child needs to certainly take ownership of their learning. We have to make children independent enough to 
uh, to take charge of their learning. However, it's important that the school should not work in silos. There has to be a continuum. There has to be a, a transition from the early to primary, primary to middle, uh, uh, you know, so and so forth. And um, there has to be a progression of learning for each child. And uh, generally in India, what happens is that it is a top-down approach. It should also be a bottom-up approach. When I uh, initially spoke about the milestones, it's important for us to understand at what age the child is able to do what. And if we are not mapping the learning um, uh, outcomes to the milestones, then we are not doing justice to the learner. Mm. So that's very important. Mm. What would be one message that you would want to give a principal of a school who was, let's say, maybe uh, having full experience, all her experience is steep in teaching 9th and 10th maths or science. As, a, as somebody who's a who's passionate early years educator and somebody who really cares for it, what would you want to tell them uh, so that, you know, early years has a voice choice and, and, and a place in, in the grand scheme of things? Yeah. Um, so early years is the foundation of, of what you get in the senior schools. If early years is, uh, is not worked well, if the work with the child is not really um, been done well in the early years, you will have a lot of problems in, um, in senior years. So it's important for a principal or anyone who's working in the senior school sh should come down and spend some time to understand how early years work. Because uh, if we falter here, then um, we will not be able to make a, a great human being. Because we all know till the age of eight, we are uh, that's the maximum um, age where you know brain is developing. And we need to do a lot till age of eight and if we don't uh, we are not able to do best here then yes it's it's we are not going to be do we're not going to be doing justice to the child neither to the school nor to the learning journey of uh, the learner thank you so much i really hope that these principles understand that uh, you know the way to go up is to learn more about the early years and to get it right at the start and a lot of things will fall beautifully in place of them thank you for being with us today thank you pleasure